All right, welcome back, everyone. This is the morning lecture for week two, day one of Web Fundamentals. We're going to be going over DOM manipulation. So that means um, we're going to be using JavaScript to change our HTML page, to manipulate our uh, page that we have created. Then this afternoon, we're going to use, we're going to go into groups and uh, do a, uh, a lab together. After that, we have code reviews starting at 3.30. Let's go ahead and change that. 3.30. And it should say p.m., not a.m., but it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, because it, it goes into military time. Okay. 3.30. Uh, so we'll start that then. And um, again, you're going to want to use code that you, uh, something like the profile page or Dojo Weather, that's assignment for pra a practice assignment for tomorrow, making connections, um, any of those uh, practice assignments, which look closer and closer to what we would see on the exam. So an example of an assignment that we may see on the exam would be Something similar as far as HTML, CSS would be the profile page, profile page assignment. Um, and so uh, Dojo Weather is also another similar one. Dojo Weather has some uh, JavaScript that you would want to practice with for the exam as well. So let's go over the, the, the topic of today's lecture, DOM manipulation. Let's go into what, what it means exactly to manipulate the DOM and uh, how we can use JavaScript to do that. So uh, before I dive into uh, the material on the platform, this here, I'm gonna start from here, uh, going through the click event, what is this, hover event, objects, and uh, changing HTML to CSS, changing the HTML and CSS as well as input and change and timeout. So there's a lot of, different things that we need to cover in this short hour. I'm going to go over a slide presentation that's going to give a rough overview of everything that we'd be covering today. Um, so let's get the overview of everything. And then we will cover this in detail as we go through the platform. And I want you guys to note where I am in the platform when I'm going through different rules because you most likely won't be able to memorize all this information reading it the first time, but you should be able to go back to the platform and reference where you learned it, okay? You should be able to say to yourself, oh, I remember uh, on click, I want the button to do something uh, different. Um, I want the button to change something on my page. So you have to remember OK, uh, that's related to clicking a button, button clicker. OK, so if I go here, then I'll see the rule that I need for uh, the thing that I'm looking for. Um, so reference with me here, because anytime you ask me a question after this lecture, I'm going to be pointing you back to the platform because you can reference the platform on your test. You can go over this material on your test if you ever get stuck or lost. OK. And we won't be so quick to point it to you if you get stuck on the test. You may ask some questions, but I'm just going to point you back to somewhere on this page for this lecture when manipulating the DOM or any JavaScript questions. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's go over it. What are we talking about exactly? So now we are going to be able to change our HTML, things in our HTML using JavaScript. So up until this point, JavaScript has been uh, a language that we've been writing functions in. We've been doing for loops and if statements, creating variables. And it's uh, wonderful for that reason. We can do a lot of logic. But what if we wanted logic to be uh, a tool that we would use on our web page? We can now use JavaScript with HTML. So the first thing we have to learn is how do we connect it? How do we connect JavaScript with HTML so that they can talk to each other, so that they can be uh, connected? So let's go over this slide. Connecting JS to HTML. This is how we do it. All right. At the bottom of the HTML body, 
at the very bottom within the HTML, the body, we're going to create this tag script src equals script.js. And then we have the closing script. So let's see how we do this. All right. I'm going to exit this slide for a second and go to Visual Studio. And I'm going to be doing Visual Studio as I go through the slide. I know it's an introductory slide, but we'll do a little bit of demonstration and then go into uh, in depth as we go through the platform, okay, as time allows. All I've done here, I have a folder called DOM manipulation for this lecture, and I have created inside of it an index.html and a style.css, okay? Uh, there's no reason to have a style.css, but just to show you guys, remember this, we're going to link a, the way to link a CSS is by typing link, link, CSS. And now, because this file, style.css, is named the same as this style.css, we know it's connected, OK? The process for linking our JavaScript file is going to be very similar. It's going to be very similar, OK? So let's create that JavaScript file. I'm going to create a new file by clicking that New File button. And I'm going to call my JavaScript file script js and you'll see why I'm calling that scripted.js in just a second. So this file, this JavaScript file that lives in the same folder as my index.html and my CSS, this JavaScript file is in the same folder uh, level. All right, so let's go ahead and connect our HTML and JavaScript. So we said in our introductory slide, it was going to be this tag, script src, and then in quotation, script.js. That's the name of our file. All right. So we know that we don't, we're going to do this process so that we know we're not going to make a typo. We're going to type in um, uh, script. And as soon as I type in scr for script, you'll see an option below that says script colon src. I'm going to press enter. And now, as soon as I press enter, within the quotations, within SRC, within the opening head of the script, it's going to ask me, what's the name of your JavaScript file that you're going to try to connect? So I'm going to tell it the same way that I had it spelled when I created my file, just like I did when I created a CSS file. I'm going to just now press the S, and it's going to look here at my files available and I and I enter script.js. So now my JavaScript and my HTML should be connected. My script tag is at the bottom. Again, we said at the bottom of the body, it's still within the body of our HTML, but it's at the very bottom. Okay, we'll go over why it's there in a little bit, but for now, just know it should be there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we have our script tag. And now we have to test that this is properly connected. All right. So let's write something on our HTML. Let's just write hello world so we know we can see something when we load our HTML tag. When we load our HTML, let's put in h1. h1, hello world. All right, so now let's load our HTML page. I'm going to say open with live server. Here's our page. And it should have JavaScript connected. How are we going to test this? Well, we tested it with CSS by changing the background color or just changing something in the style. If we know that change went through, then we know it was properly connected. But how can we do that with JavaScript? The way we would do that with JavaScript is by checking the console. So I'm going to right click, click inspect. And we should be familiar with this tool, right? This is our inspect tool. We've been using um, this to debug anytime we're making uh, or, or to see what's going on behind the scenes whenever we're creating an HTML page linking CSS and seeing what's going on with our styling, right? So we can we can go through our uh, our DOM. Remember, this is called this that we see here is called the DOM, which stands for Document Object Model. This is a model of our page, 
and it's created through our HTML file. So our HTML file helps create the document object model. So it's just a document, right? It's a it's a giant document. We want to access this document. Um, and well, we said we want to check to see if our JavaScript's connected. So let's go ahead and, and to this section of our terminal where I'm going to click console, right? I just moved over one tab from elements to console. And now I'm here. Okay, this is a console area, just like when I uh, click play here. Uh, oops, if I say, for example, console.log, hello world, and I click play here, right? I, I would see that console here, hello world. Well, we should also see it here and that there you see it. As soon as I console log it and I view uh, the output here, well, let's let's delete it. Let's delete it just to see the difference. Okay, so I'm gonna comment this. Our page doesn't have anything in the console log at all. But when I say console log hello world, as soon as it's connected to my JavaScript file, now I can see in the browser's console, all my console logs in this section here. Okay, all my console logs can now appear here. So let's do another console log. Console log. Um, happy Monday. Okay, happy Monday. And now it's here. So my JavaScript file is properly connected and I can test by console logging and inspecting and checking the console on our browser to see that our outputs are uh, printing here. Okay, so let's take a quick pull check. Did everyone understand how I just connected the JavaScript to the HTML and how I tested to see that it was connected? All right. All I did was connect our JavaScript to our HTML and I tested to see whether it was connected through a console log. These consoles on the browser let me know that I am connected. Okay, I like what I'm seeing on the on the poll results. Good job so far. We're all paying attention. We're, we're paying attention closely. So this is the first step. So let's take a quick pause here. When we are preparing for our test, on Wednesday. After we've completed our core assignments, we've done our code review, we're prepping for the test. We, we you know, we, we're feeling a little nervous maybe. Uh, we wanna make the best use of our time. Well, the way that we can do that before we take our test is just to make sure everything is properly connected. Is my index.html connected with my CSS? Did I test it? Did I change something in the CSS? Uh, is my JavaScript properly connected to my HTML? Did I test it? Once you create these three files, connect them, test the connection, then you have a template to get started for the test, right? The, all this that we've created, with we can create without knowing what the assignment is going to be. And everything is ready uh, to receive input, right? I've just saved myself maybe five, 10 minutes on the test by creating all these files and making sure they were properly connected. So that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. You can do the, you can connect HTML, JavaScript, and CSS and do this all before the test and save yourself some time by creating these connections and testing these connections. Okay. So let's continue. That's how we connect. All right, so let's get out of here. And now that we've connected our JavaScript to our HTML, we are gonna see now what we can do once it is connected. 
All right, so let's see, let's look at the titles of these slides. I'm gonna go over what key, not key world, but key word, sorry for that typo, I'll fix that later. Key word, this, okay, not key world, excuse me. What is the key word, this? We're gonna go over different JavaScript events. JavaScript events refers to what the user does when the user is on the page, either clicking something or hovering over something, changing something, all right? Those are events. So things, actions that the user performs uh, on the DOM. Okay, we're gonna go over the keyword this, what that means, different events, the query selector. So that's, so the keyword this and the, and the query selector, what those are, are different ways to access the elements that we would create on our HTML. So any tag that we would create on our HTML, there's two different ways that we can access those tags now, get that information. There's two ways that we're gonna show you today. First way we're gonna start off is showing you the keyword this, and then we're gonna go over the query selector, okay? And uh, the last thing we'll go over is callback functions. Callback functions, uh, that's not going to be so deep. It's it just sounds fancier than it is. So let's uh, we'll save this for the very end. I won't explain what this is until we get there. All right. So let's go over the keyword this. What is this? Okay. For now, when we see that well, there's going to be something now called a keyword this that we're introducing. Whenever we see it it's gonna to refer to the object the HTML tag is connected to, all right? We're not gonna get deeper than that definition right now. It's, this is a, it, it, it can refer to different things in JavaScript. For now, we're gonna just think of it simply, okay? Whatever this, uh, wherever that word this is connected to, that's gonna to refer to the thing it's connected to, okay? Um, so if I had a big sticker on my chest and the and it said keyword this right straight across my chest, it would be referring to me, uh, your instructor, Josh, because that word this would be attached on me. So wherever that word this is attached, it's referring to that thing it's attached to. Okay. Once we get it from our HTML, all right. Once we attach a keyword this to one of our HTML tags. We can access it in our JavaScript. We can console log whatever it is that we're connected to, and then we can change it, okay? So let's go ahead and go over what we mean here, okay? Because it's gonna get a little bit too conceptually abstract. We're gonna go over, we're, let's give an example as to what we mean. All right, in order to do this, I'm gonna just quickly, uh, refer to the platform here and look at this bit of code. This is what I'm going to be using. All right, but before I use that, let's let's go over some um, let's go over some fundamentals of JavaScript. All right, so I'm going to create a function. And the function is gonna be called, um, say hello. All right, I'm creating a JavaScript function called say hello. And all it's gonna do is console.log hello. If this console log exists in this function like this, should I expect to see it when I inspect here? Should I expect to see hello here when I inspect now? No, right? Because it's wrapped in a function. It's only going to console log if this function say hello is called, right? So how do we call this function? Can somebody tell me how we call this function? Remember, the function exists in the memory as it's read, but it won't actually start the function unless you invoke it. Remember the start button that we said? We have to create a start button in order for this code to run. So what is it that I need to do? All right, I see it in the chat. Say hello, okay. 
Nice job. So we're going to say, say hello. Now, this function is going to run as soon as it reads line five. So it's going to go one through three. OK, I see the function exists. And then on line five, oh, OK, you want me to actually run the function. OK, so let's go through it. Let's read it. Let's do it. It's going to console log hello now. So now if we inspect our document, we see hello. We see hello because it read the function and then it logged it as soon as it was read. It read the invocation and it logged console log as soon as this function was read after it was invoked. I need to make sure that we understand this before I go any further. I know it's uh, uh, elementary stuff that's review, but we need to make sure we understand it before we can advance our, our understanding. So we know how a function works. We know how function call works, right? I should only get nines and tens at this point. Okay, great. Great. We're all at the same, we're all on the same page. Yeah, we want semicolons. Good. Good point. Okay, so what I want to do now is attack. I want to take this here. I want to take this here, this function call, and I want to take it away. I'm going to take it out of this JavaScript and put it into our HTML. We're going to do that. We're going to do that using the keyword this and by accessing um well let's before i describe any more i know i'm kind of uh stuttering here but let's let's do this first let's create a button all right and i want this button for now this button just says click me all right so we have hello world and this button that says click me i want this button to call this function. So somehow I need to attach this function call and add it to this button. I need to take it out of the JavaScript and add it to the button. So the way that I can do that is by saying on click, on click. Okay, if we add this in the opening tag of our button, we can now access a function call when we click the button by taking this here, this function call, I'm going to cut it from here and paste it in there. Okay, all I've done now is take it from this JavaScript and paste it inside this on click section with the quotations and the invocation within the quotations. All right, so let's see what happens now. Now, when I click this button, hello appears on the console. It didn't appear before, as you see, when I refresh the page and it has a clean start, nothing is there. But when I click, click me now, hello appears in the console. How did I do that? How did I do that? The way I did that is by saying, I want this function call to be ran. This is the start button to our function. And I attached it now to this on click, which is attached to this button. This, this here is attached to this on click, which is now attached to this button. So anytime I click this button, it's going to console log hello. All right, so let's take a poll survey for how well we're understanding so far how to connect a function call to a button click. Anytime I click this button now, it's going to tell me hello in the console. It's telling me you've said it, said it seven times. 
And however many times I click it, it's going to tell me how many times I've clicked it. Could you uh, demonstrate what happens if you remove the parentheses on the on click for the function? Online, yeah. Um, sorry, Vince, can you say? If you just remove the parentheses. Oh, yes. And if you tried that, what would happen? Yes, good, good question. So if I remove the parentheses now, and I refresh my page, and I click, click me. Now you see there's nothing going on in my console. Why is that happening? Why is it happening? So someone, someone tell me. All right, time's up. The reason, <laughs> the reason it's not calling the function, why is it not calling the function is because it doesn't have the proper syntax right? A function call is the name of the function plus the parentheses. If it has something that it's, it's expected to receive here, then we have a parameter and we have to put something in to receive the argument uh, for that parameter. Okay, so now we see how we're able to attach a function call to a button click. I want to show you guys now how you can pass in information from our HTML to our JavaScript using the keyword this. Okay, let's use the keyword this now. Okay, that way we can console log this and then we can change it. So now we're passing information from our HTML to our JavaScript. We're not just connecting and saying a function call, we're gonna pass information from our HTML to our JavaScript. Okay, so the way that we're gonna do that is we have to have something in order to be able to receive that information. We have to have some sort of, what do we call it? Parameter, all right? So I'm going to create a parameter that receives information. It can be called anything. I'm just gonna call it element. It's just going to be called element for now because it's receiving an element from the HTML. I've deleted my console log because I no longer need it. All right. And I'm going to console log. I'm going to console log the element that I would receive. Okay. So now this function call. This function call is saying you're going to receive something called an element, and then you're going to console log that thing called an element. All right. So it's still not complete. If I run my function now, I will get an undefined, right? Because we haven't passed in anything to element. Element uh, is saying I should receive something and then console log it. But for now, it's undefined if I click click me. What I need to do in order to pass in some information is right in here within the parentheses of the function call that we're calling say hello. We're still calling it stay hello. We haven't changed that. We've attached it to the on click still within the button. All we're gonna do now is put in this keyword this, all right? Keyword this. And we said that whatever this, that keyword is attached to, is going to be what we receive in our JavaScript, okay? So whatever this is attached to, what is this attached to right now? Can someone tell me? What is this attached to right now? Button? Yes, it's attached to this button because it's within the say hello uh, function call that we have in our JavaScript within the on click but that is all within this button. So if I pass in this and I have something, uh, a parameter here that's able to receive it and we console log it, what do we, re uh, what do we receive in the console? Let's go ahead and experiment. I'm going to click the button now. And now you see here in the console and the JavaScript console, an HTML element. This is the first time we've been able to console log something in HTML 
uh, in our JavaScript, from HTML in our JavaScript. And the way that we were able to do that is by attaching that keyword this to the function call to the button, to the on click to the button. Okay, so let's take a poll. How did you guys understand or did you see how I was able to console log that button by passing in this in the on click and receiving that through a placeholder element that I'm able to console log? Wait, so real quick, why wouldn't we just uh, get the word this in our console log? Like, okay, you get the entirety of that, that line. Why didn't we just put this here instead of element? No, no, no. Like, if you go back to the console log when you're double checking it, it came up as like all of line 14. Like, button yes. on. like why wouldn't it just be this rather than? That's, that's because it's a special word and whatever that word is attached to is going to be the element that it's going to bring in. Oh, okay. okay. It's like a, it's like a hook. It'll hook onto something and then bring that thing it's hooked onto. Uh, Josh, so I have a question about the console. Yes. So every time I click inspects, the console appears on the side. Is there a way I can format that to the bottom? Yes. Those three dots at the top right will let mm -hmm. you choose where you want to view the dock. The okay. dock can be on the right, on the bottom, or the left. All right, thanks. Uh -huh. Okay, so we understood that this can be whatever it's referring to when it's uh, whatever it's attached to. I can, I can use multiple um, lines that say this, and they will all be different depending on what they are attached to. So I'll make a second button, a button, and I'll call this one button two, okay? And then I'll say on click, I'm, all I'm going to do now is just copy that same on click, same function, and it also I'm gonna copy this as well. But you'll notice that when I click button two, when it passes in this, in order to uh, passes in this to this function, it's going to pass in button two when I click button two. This will refer to button two when I click button two, and this will refer to button one when I click button one. So it's whatever it's attached to. Is that making sense so far? So it's a keyword that's that's able to um, drag in information from wherever it's attached to. All right, so it looks like so far this is um, clear. So far it's clear. So let's go back to our slide. All right, we're able to receive information from an HTML to our uh, JavaScript, we can console log whatever we receive from this, and we can also change it, all right? Once we receive the thing, once we receive the thing from our console, okay, I'm gonna clear it. Once we receive the thing, we receive this button, we can then go into our JavaScript and say, whatever you received, I want you to change that thing. And once it's changed, our HTML receives it, and then it will uh, do whatever with it that we tell it to do, however we tell it to change, okay? So for now, we won't change. All I wanted to let you guys know is that this can pass in information, our function can receive that information, and then we're gonna be able to change it later on, okay? We won't go over the changes yet. We'll do that later on in the slide. For now, we wanna go over events. So let's present this here. There are different types of events that we're gonna go over. And these different events are on different um, slides in the platform here. So where is the slides here? These different events, you can see them in different slides. I've just gathered them into one slide here. So there's on click, that would be when you click an element on the page. There's on mouse over. So when you 
hover over a mouse event on the page. There's on mouse out, that's mousing out of an element on the page. So what do I, so these are different than on click. So let's, let's show you what I mean here. I'm gonna just change this from on click to on mouse over. And you'll see here that now I don't even have to click my button, but this event records that when I hover over my button, it's gonna do the thing. I know I no longer have to make it on a click, okay? I, I promise I didn't click it, I'm just hovering over. So hover, hover, every time I hover, it's gonna call that function. The, the function's gonna console log whatever's passed through, okay? So there are different types of events. And here there's on mouse over, on mouse out, on change, on input. These are related to uh, text inputs when you're put into a text. I have a quick question about on mouse over. Yes. So features like that then could be integrated into sites to like maybe track like a mouse going over a certain area. Like say you want to track metrics on like an interest in a product. You can yeah. see how many times they've cursed over and they can track. That's insane. Yeah, definitely. Creepy. Thank you. Yeah, no, you can, you can um, make your page extremely smart like that. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can make it on button clicks. How many, you can record how many times a user clicks your button or ho hovers over something. Um, and uh, there's, there's more events than this. Okay. But for now, this is all we need to know. On click, on mouse over, on mouse out, on change, and on input. Okay. We'll go over these in detail as we go through uh, the platform, the Coding Dojo platform, and how they can uh, affect our HTML. But I just want to introduce big picture here. These are the different events we'll run into. Okay, so let's get some feedback. How well do we understand that there are different events and they work differently, but they can be all... Um, changed or attached the way that you saw me change on click to on mouse over. Okay, so far, understanding is pretty good. All right, I like that. Let's continue. Now we have the query selector, okay? The query selector is another way that we can pass in information from our HTML to our JavaScript, but it's different than this. This, whenever we call the function and we pass in the keyword this in the parentheses, it's going to refer to that thing that we had just uh, attached it to. All right. So in this case, the thing I'm saying is the button. All right. So this will pass in the button. But there is another way that we can grab this button without using uh, this. Okay. So now we're going to delete the keyword this. And we're going to figure out a way that we can access our function without passing in the keyword this. So let's go over what that is. We have the query selector. Okay, we can access elements in our DOM by the thing called the query selector. Query means um, to ask. So it's the ask selector, it's asking, hey, do you have this on your page? I'm looking for something called this thing that we would give it a name, okay? So um, what we wanna do is create a variable. Oops, we wanna create a variable and in our JavaScript and make that variable equal that thing that we are selecting on our HTML page from the query selector. We have to watch out for duplicates and we're gonna be changing now. Once we grab this, we can change the, the element. We're gonna show how to do that. And we can also do that using this, but I just chosen up to this point to show you that we can change uh, something on our page. So I'll show you how to change something on our page using this and also the query selector. So let's do both. All right, so let's go to our query selector here on our platform and see how we can access uh, something on our page, okay? So see here, this thing has an ID.title. That's how we were gonna get it. We're gonna, we're gonna add an ID 
here. And I'm gonna call this ID hello button. Okay, hello. Uh, let's give it bigger. Yeah, it's called the hello button. All right, I've called this button by the ID hello button. Now I'm gonna access that ID through the query selector. Now I'm gonna access this ID through the query selector. So first I'm gonna create a variable. I'm going to say, let's, let's create some lines here. I'm gonna say var, I'm gonna say hello button. I'm creating a variable called hello button. And I'm going to make it equal to document.query selector. This here is accessing our document. So we're saying the HTML document dot query selector. This is the tool that we're gonna to use to be able to look through our page and select something with a specific uh, ID or class name. And we're also going to say after this query selector, within quotations, within parentheses, give me the ID of hello button. So I'm going to say hashtag hello dash button. And does it have to be ID or can we just use class? You can use class as well. I'm just using ID for this example. Okay, good question. Yes, you can use class, you can use ID. I'm using ID for this example. Okay, so now that we have a var hello button and we've made it equal to the document query selector and uh, that query selector is looking for an ID somewhere on our page that has that same ID, hello button, right? And we have to put a hashtag in front of it to let it know we're looking for an ID. And so when we call our function now, we're gonna say, when we call our function, let's delete our second button. When we call our function, we are gonna console.log the variable that we called hello button. And that variable equals the document query selector looking for the ID hello button. So it's gonna look for here on our page, ID hello button, and it's gonna console log this button the same way it console logged our button when we passed in this, except for this time, we have a tool that's looking for a specific uh, button on our page with an ID hello button. It's looking for anything on our page with that ID hello button. It just so happens to be that the only thing on our page with that ID hello button is our button and that's correct, right? Because we don't want to share IDs between other elements. So let's see what this shows us. So if I click this button now, or if I hover over it, let's change it to on click. That's a little bit on click. So if I click this button now, it will show me that button that has that ID hello button. It still has that click hello this, but this is not being used. So I can even delete this keyword this. All right, I've deleted this. And now here's our button. Here's our function call. Our function call is accessing our button through the document query selector that's already in JavaScript. Okay, so do we understand now how I accessed my button through the query selector instead of passing in the keyword this in the function call? All right, this one maybe is a little bit, takes a little bit more practice. It's not as simple as passing in this. This time we're creating a variable and we're giving that value of the variable uh, something on our HTML page that 
is looking for our hello button. If I don't have this properly spelled, if this isn't spelled correctly, then it's not going to be able to access it. Let's delete an L from hello. All right, let's delete an L from hello and see what happens when we try to access that ID hello button. All right, so I'm going to refresh my page. I'm going to click the click me and I get a, a null value. That's because I misspelled it. If I make a slight spelling error, it's not going to connect. All right, so we need this here. Let me, let me draw here so it's a little bit more visible. We need this here to connect with this. Once we make that connection, this whole button on line 14 is going to be what we console log here. Once we make that connection, we can console log that whole entire button anywhere we like. We can console log it even outside the function if we want. We can console log it here. It just won't be attached to the button click now. It will just console log as soon as the page loads. All right, does anyone have any questions about this before I move on? No? Okay. All right, then we're moving fast. We're doing good. We are able now to access information from our HTML through a query selector. All right, so we're able to log it to the console. And I told you guys we would be able to change our HTML from our JavaScript. So let's see how to do that. Let's, let's look into how to do that. We said we could do it with this and with the query selector. So let's do it with both. Let's do it with both. What I'm going to do now is change something using, um, let's see here. It's called .inner text. I want to show you guys on the platform where it is, though. So you kind of have to know where these are by reading these pages. You have to read them thoroughly to get acquainted. Um, so the next, what, what I'm looking for is actually on this page. So what I'm going to do is change the inner text of that element that I selected by saying dot inner text equals. And then whatever I want to be the text, I put in the quotations. So I'm going to say hello button. Instead of console logging hello button, I'm going to say hello button dot inner text, let me see that I spelled it right, oh, capital T, inner text equals goodbye button. Why not? I just want to change it to something opposite, okay? On the click of this button, I'm going to now say access that button, all right? We have that button through the variable, so we say that variable dot inner text dot inner text is what's going to let us uh, change the text of the element. Dot inner text allows us to change the text of the element. All right, so that's what I'm pointing out here. Dot inner text, this thing here, I'm going to make it equal something different, goodbye button. So let's go ahead and change that. So now my click me, if I click it, it says something different. Goodbye button. Do you see that there? I can't switch it back, but if I refresh my page, now if I click it, I'm changing the inner text of this button. So you see that on a click now on my HTML, I'm able to change that uh, text that that button says. So for example, if I had it to say, um, let's say for example, this button was an on or off switch, okay? It's on, and when I click it, I want the inner text to say off. 
So on, if I click it, I can change the inner text now to say off. You guys see that? Let me uh, zoom in here. On to off, on, off. I'm relaunching the poll now. Do you guys see how I did that? I said, Wait, is there a reason why the console is not showing anything? The console is not showing anything because I deleted all my console logs from the console here. I can, oh, okay. I can add something, say console.log. Every time I click this button, I want to say, hello, Ryan. So if I have the console here, if I click it, it'll say, hello, Ryan, and it will also switch it to off. It will also switch it to off. Okay, so let's take a quick detour before we move on to the next point in our slide. If we're able to change an on button to off, how can we change it from uh, off to on and back, back and forth? How can we make that functionality happen? Anyone have any ideas? Is that a for loop? Okay, well, I heard, uh, I heard two answers. The answer is if statement. Right? It's like the flashlight if, uh, example. Right, like a flashlight. If it's off, then we switch it to on. If it's on, then we switch it to off. So let's make this thing work. I'm going to change the name of our function just so it makes more sense uh, in regards to what we're doing. I'm going to say, I'm going to call this one switch. I'm going to call it light switch. Light, light switch. I'm going to copy that name and change the name of our function here so that it actually connects. All right, this is our light switch button. And we're able to make it say off. What's the condition that we would make it want to turn on and off based on what conditions? Right, so let's write an if statement. If, if the light switch is off, okay, if hello button that light switch is equal to off, then we want to make it equal on, right? So we take this line, paste it in here, switch it to on. If hello button a dot inner text, if it's equal to off, then reassign the value to be on when you uh, activate this function. Else, what should this else say? Turn it off, right? So let's take that turn it off line, paste it here. So now we have a function that has an if else statement. Anytime we call this function, it's going to run through this if statement and say, uh, is your light bulb off? Okay, then we're going to switch it to on. Else, we're going to switch it to off, right? Because if it's not, if it's not off, then it's on. And this else covers the situation where if the light bulb was on, right? Else is every other situation uh, if this if statement if this uh, runs and this is not true. So let's go ahead and test our light switch now. We have our set to on and we're gonna click it and we get off. And if I click it again, it goes back to on. And now using JavaScript, HTML and uh, HTML and JavaScript, we're able to make a light switch. We can actually even make this color our page differently. Um, we can access even CSS rules through our if and else statement. So there's lots that we can do here to actually make a light switch. Okay, did you guys see that? I'm gonna check to see that now you understand that you can use logic in your JavaScript to test values in your HTML and change them based on those values. Okay, so now we can go 
uh, switch a button from on to off and off to on using an if and else statement within our function call. Okay, who can, who can tell me how to do this using the keyword this instead of a query selector? How would I do this using this instead of a query selector? Can someone guide me? Okay, the way we would do it, I see Mark typing in the text. So I'm gonna follow Mark's direction here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass in, first I'm gonna delete, first I'm gonna delete this here. We don't, we're not gonna use, oh, let's comment it out. First I'm gonna comment it out, same as deleted to the uh, code reader, okay? And now I cannot access hello button. So I cannot access hello buttons.inner text. I cannot access it, access it here or here. So there's gotta be something else that we can use in order to get uh, that inner text. So we're gonna pass in this. And then in order to receive this, we have to have a placeholder. So let's call it element. That, that way we know that we're receiving an element from our page. We say element here, okay? We're writing the same function. Instead of using a query selector and accessing it through this variable, we're now accessing it through this element and passing in this to that element. So let's go see, let's see the, the result of this now. I refresh my page, everything saves. If I click on, it goes to off and from off, it goes to on. So I'm able to do the same thing, except for now I'm using this instead of the document query selector. So I can do it both ways. More than one way to do it using JavaScript. Okay, let's take a pull check to see how well I how well we understood how to do the same functionality, same button except for one is with a query selector and one is using the keyword this. So what happens if you use both? You can, you only need to use one or the other. Yeah, okay. Don't need to use both at the same time. Don't do that. That's gonna confuse you and whoever you're writing code with or for if you're in the same company project. Don't use both at the same time. Just use one or the other, okay? Sometimes it may be easier to just pass in this and write a function like this. Sometimes you need to actually uh, access something on your page other than the button. So for example, let's say I wanna change this hello world instead of this on, uh, instead of the button that we're clicking. Okay, so let's revert our code to now work the way it was working previously with the query selector. The only difference now is that I'm going to take away this ID and I'm gonna stick it in the H1. All right, all I've done is I've taken that ID, I've uh, stolen it from the button and I've given it to the H1. And this thing, even though it says hello button, is accessing the ID hello button wherever it is on the page. At this point, it's connected to our H1. And it works as an on off switch. So let's go ahead and change some things around. So on the button, I'm gonna call it the, uh, this is gonna be the switch. And this is going to say on. So here's our switch now, and we're going to change our H1 by clicking this button. And there it is. I've changed the H1, something other than the button, 
and I can mail, I can now make it an on off switch using the query selector. So in this case, what I'm, what, what I'm doing here is I'm using the button to change the HTML and it's something other than the button. So we probably don't want to use this for this function because we're changing something other than the thing that we are clicking. So when we're changing something other than the thing we're clicking, query selector is a good idea to use because we can just access that thing's ID and change it based on the ID of the element. All right, so let's do another poll check. Do we understand how to change another element on our page based on uh, clicking something? So we, we don't wanna pass in this. We don't wanna change the thing we are clicking. We wanna change something else. You understand how I did that? All I did was switch the ID from the button to the H1, and now my query selector is gonna access wherever that ID lives so that we can change the values that the ID is accessing through the query selector. Okay, awesome. We are making, we are covering lots of ground and uh, we are understanding the main point. So this is going good. All right, lastly, we said we we're gonna go over callback functions. So let's go over what callback functions are. Let me expand this so we can see. Okay, callback functions uh, are a specific example of a callback function right now is gonna be the timeout, all right? We're gonna see this timeout in use. And so let's go over the definition of a callback function and how uh, we can understand a timeout using a callback function. All right, so a callback function is a function that passed into another function as an argument, uh, and then it is invoked inside the outer function to complete some kind of routine or action. So what does this mean? Let's look at this function here below at the bottom right. We have function message, uh, and then it's it, all it does is console log delayed message. So here we have this function, it's called message, and it does this thing, it console logs. All right, so here we just have a console log start, just, to, just a string, and then set timeout. This is the main one that we're looking at, set timeout. Set timeout receives another function as an argument another function as an argument. So it's receiving this function here, right here. That thing that says message is the name of the function. So set timeout is a function call that says, I want you to run this function after this much time. And this is in milliseconds, by the way. So this is three seconds. So after three seconds, I want you to log this message. After three seconds, um, then run this function. The reason this is called a callback is because the code is gonna run these three lines, one, two, and it says, oh, you want me to start the process for this now, but actually do it in three seconds, okay? So then it's gonna go on to three, console log end, and then when three seconds have passed, we should see our console log this here, the delayed message. That's because we delayed it by three seconds. So the process had started, but it had not finished after three seconds. And this would have completed, this end console log would have completed before those three seconds are up because the JavaScript runs so fast, right? It, it runs and reads everything from top to bottom really fast. If it sees a callback function, it will start it and then go into the next line and finish it whenever it's finished. So it will just keep reading the JavaScript. It has it on the back burner, it's doing it, but it won't appear on the console until 
that function is actually run after three seconds. So let's give an example of a of a callback and a timer. Oops, I'm zooming in here. So let's escape here. Let's write our function in our JavaScript. So let's just see the functionality. So I'm just going to comment all of this for now. Let's get a fresh view. I'm going to indent. All right, here on the JavaScript page. Uh, we can close this for now as well. Okay, so let's write our function. Function message and we want it to say delayed message okay so let's console log start set timeout message and you see it had already had it pre-filled out because it, it recognized all the functions available on the page and it said, oh, you have one called message. Is that the one you're trying to call? Yes, that's the one I'm trying to call. So after 3000 milliseconds, which is three seconds, we're gonna console.log end. So let's see this console log in action. Ooh, let's, let's clear everything. Run, start, end. Three seconds later, we get the delayed message. Did you guys see that? I'll make it even more delayed. Let's wait five seconds. Okay. Run it. Start and end, right, right uh, after the other. Five seconds later, we get the delayed message. That's because we had a callback function, a function that calls another function after a uh, parameter here. We want you to run this function after this many seconds, five seconds. So that's what a callback is. And that's how set timeout is a callback function. All right, so this is the last uh, subject we're gonna introduce for you this lecture, callback. Do we understand how a callback works roughly and how set timeout is a callback function? It receives the function as an argument. So it's gonna receive another function. This message, this whole function is represented by that word message. It's gonna run this function after 5,000 milliseconds. Okay, all right. And I know this is the end of the lecture here. We've given you a lot of information so uh, I promise this is the end. So the set timeout will call the callback function after the amount of time provided. And that's all it is. How does it relate to what we're doing? Well, we can make certain things appear on our page now. If you click something, you can make the timeout to make something appear on our page after so many seconds, right? We can, um, for example, Let's, let's go over the alert, okay? So let's go over this alert. Um, what I'm gonna do, pull up the HTML and create a new button. I'm gonna comment everything out that we had put on our page so far, and I'm gonna just create a new button. Let's format our document so it's a little easier to read. And I don't think this needs to be here. Okay, so we have a new button. Button. And what this button is gonna do is it's gonna alert something on our page. So let's go ahead and take this on click alert hello. So I'm gonna paste it at the beginning of my button. 
and it's missing a quote here. That's why it's bugged out. All right, so your on click needs an equal sign, two quotes, and then the function call in here. You may have noticed I didn't create a function called alert in my JavaScript. So what is this actually going to do? Well, this one here is a special function that will, when you call it alert and you put um, parentheses and something within the quotations in the parentheses, let's show you what it does. All right. So I'm going to click to make an alert. Let's do it. And as soon as we click it, we have this function uh, do this. It creates a pop-up on our page and we see this hello. We can exit out of that now. All right. Anytime I click this, it'll give me a message. Now with the set timeout, what I can do, for example, in this situation is make the alert pop up after so many delayed seconds, right? Maybe after 10 seconds, I want after someone clicks a button to make the alert show up, right? The way that I can make that happen is by moving this alert to a specific function and then attaching a callback to it. I think that uh, this will be the last thing I show. We're already going over time here. And there's a lot of information to cover. This is not the most important thing to memorize for anything on the test, but we want to show you how to do it. Okay, so what we're going to do is make this console log. We're going to pass in, uh, we're, we're going to actually make it call the message function. And this message function is going to uh, alert delayed message. And we are going to make it uh, set timeout. Um, we're going to take this function and uh, delay it by five seconds every time it's called. Okay, so let's do that now. Refresh my page. I click my button. Oh, we get a delayed message right away. So we have to fix something here. Oh, and we also got our five second delayed message. Okay, so what we want to do is make it call our set timeout. So let's let's put the set timeout within another function. So let's call it function delayed message. Our delayed message function is going to call our message function. All right. So what we're going to put here instead is our delayed message. So when we click this here, it will activate this function. This function will activate the, say, activate the set timeout. The set timeout is going to trigger the message after five milliseconds. So let's go ahead and see how this works now. Click one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go, after six seconds. I just counted fast. There's my delayed message. Okay, do we understand how then uh, a callback function set timeout can work? This one's a little bit more complicated, so I can understand if you guys need a little bit more practice with this instead of just seeing it once. But again, all the code will be on GitHub. You'll see it uh, in the video as well if you wanna see the recording. So this is how you uh, delay a function call after setting it off. So we don't have to use the keyword this? We don't have to use the keyword this. No, not for this one. This one is just going to make an alert happen. 
we want to pass in the keyword this when we're going to change something related to the thing that uh, that we just clicked or hovered over, for example, right? When when the el when the element itself needs to be changed, then we pass in this. When the element itself, so if this button needed to be changed, then we pass in this. This case, we're not changing anything. We're just making an alert pop up on the page five seconds after we've clicked it. All right, gotcha. Okay, now this ends the introduction. So in order to get some practice in, we'd have to go in uh, in detail through all of these slides. And this is what I want you guys to do today, okay? Starting with document object model, read through each of these slides and we have some core assignments. We have button clicker. And with button clicker, we would have to make an alert pop up on a page if we clicked a button. We want to make this login button to be log out if we click it. And we also want to remove something on the page. I haven't shown you guys how to remove something, but it's super easy, right? So for example, um, if I wanted uh, this button, let's, let's create a new button to be removed. If I said button and we created a function, let's, let's just um, comment out everything here, get with the fresh view so we're not so confused here. Okay, so I'm gonna make this button to say, remove me. Okay, so this button here, when we see it, it's gonna be a big remove me button. I want to remove this button. So what I have to do is create a function call. So on click, on click of this button, I want you to call the function uh, that's gonna be called remove me. Okay, remove me is the name of my function. And I'm gonna pass in this button to remove me. All right, I'm gonna remove this whole button when I click this button. All right, so let's create our function. It's called, function remove me, all right? And since it's receiving this, I'm going to pass in the element here. And, and I'm gonna say element dot remove, element dot remove. So let's see what this does. And there we are. That's how you make something remove off the page. You can either remove it passing in this, or you could access it through the document query selector. We could, we could access this button by creating an ID, accessing that ID, and then saying in our remove that variable name that we attach to the query selector for the ID call dot remove, whatever variable name we would have created. Okay, how well do we understand the dot remove from JavaScript? Can that be re used reverse? In reverse, how? How would that be? I mean, like not reverse per, per se, but let's say like instead of the button disappearing, the whole object disappears. The whole object? Well, which whole object would, would that like, be? Let's say I had a button on something, and when I click that button, I don't want just the button to disappear, but I want everything that the button attached to to disappear. That makes yep. sense. Definitely a way to do that. How can we do that without using this? You can look at the parent child. OK, all right. What about using the document query selector? If I put an ID on, for example, let's let's put let's put a um, let's make a div to wrap around this button, right? Let's make a div wrap around this button. I'll create a ID called button wrapper. I'll say uh, var button. All right, I'm creating a button 
a container to hold the query selector. So document dot query selector. And in the parentheses, in the quotes, I'm going to say hashtag button wrapper. So add a semicolon button wrapper. And then instead of receiving an element, I'm going to say um, button dot remove. Okay, so this button variable button on my JavaScript is going to be equal to the query selector of button wrapper, which is the wrapper of our button. So this is surrounding our button. So we no longer need to pass in this because we're going to delete this wrapper that contains this button. So what I'll do. Uh, as well is let's style this button so that we can see that we're actually deleting it. So we'll say a hashtag button wrapper. Height 200 pixels, width 200 pixels. Oh, I don't think I need to add a width, but let's just say height 200 pixels, background color red. All right, so this is the container for that button. Can we see that? I'm going to click this button and remove the container that holds the button as well. The way I did that was by saying, access the button wrapper. Actually, I want to call this button wrapper. I called it button. That's not, that's not completely descriptive. So I'm going to call it button wrapper. So let's go ahead and click that button now. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you guys the full code here. That's what I'm working with. Do you need a var in front of the button wrapper when you're declaring it? Yes. Good, good catch. I deleted that by accident. OK. Or I didn't. I'm not sure anymore. OK. If I click it now. The whole thing is removed. Did you see that? I was able to do that by putting an ID on the container and saying, remove from the container level from the document query selector. Okay, so if I click this button, its parent is removed. Did you guys see how I did that? I want to just take a poll to see if that was understood. Okay. Okay, things are connecting. And that's that's pretty much uh, an introduction that's going to cover all of the document object model reading that you will have to cover. Okay. Again, you're going to have three JavaScript related questions on your test. And they're going to be three random ones. It may be you remove something from the page or make an alert pop up or make something um, uh, change to a different text when you click it, uh, log out to log in. Um, there may be, uh, and this one I didn't go over, I'm running out of time, so I won't be able to. So I'll just introduce it to you guys now. There's the input and change. You can make something uh, change ba based on the input that you would uh, put into a uh, input label an input here. So base also even on the select here, you can make an alert to pop up uh, to show what you've selected. So there's a select uh, sh on, what is it called? On change. So you put on change on a select to change from these options. Okay, on change is how you would access it through a function. And for an input, let's see, is that on here? On an input is on input here. So this is how you would access when someone changes something in their search on an input tag. And you can 
set something to be the value of that input. Okay, maybe we'll we'll go over this in the afternoon uh, a little bit before we break out into groups. So I'll make a point to make, uh, we'll go over these input and change document in the afternoon. But for now, I think we're overloaded on information. Okay, so uh, we'll continue this DOM manipulation in this afternoon. We'll have a, a breakout group session to work on um, the project as well. Okay, so we'll break out this afternoon. And uh, button clicker, the one I mentioned here, is the core assignment for the day. Button clicker is the core assignment. So you want to get through this. This is the core assignment. And practice assignment is video preview. This is also uh, a really great practice for the test. It's really, it's not that difficult to make this page. We give you the code already. What we want you to do is make the video play when you hover your mouse over the video section. This is not mandatory, it's just practice? Practice, or... practice, yes. Key okay. for practice. My Visual Studio keeps saying that it doesn't recognize the video element, so I couldn't get through that one. Okay, we'll 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 debug it uh, when we go into breakout rooms. Um, but before we do that, do we have any questions re uh, relating to today's lecture? Any of the material we've covered? I haven't tried it, but when you're doing document query selectors, do you necessarily have to have the class or ID, or can you use the element itself? You can use the element itself, right? If there is more than one element though it's going query selector is not going to be able to find it if there's more than one of that type of element you can use the class as well you can access it by the class but if there's more than one element with that same class name it will break as well so you have to have a unique um way of grabbing it so that's why for this one i'd recommend id id is going to be unique to each element and then uh, you'll know that when you grab it by the ID, you're grabbing that one specifically. I think when you have multiple, like in this sense of a class, it's going to get the first one and ignore the rest. Um, you'll run into problems. There's different ways that you can query select. You can do query select all. There's different, uh, you can document access specific classes or IDs. Right now, we're just introducing document.querySelector. Select one unique uh, thing on the page at a time. Practice with that before using other methods. So um, what's the primary function of document uh, query selector again? I'm still trying to... Um... Document query selector accesses something on our HTML page. So in this sense, we wanted to delete, when we click this button here for the last example that we use, we don't want to just delete the button. We want to delete this whole red container that holds the button. So what we did is we gave that container, this div that holds this button. Do you see how the button's within the div? We gave this container an ID button wrapper. Okay, we give that container a specific ID. And then in the JavaScript, we said, I wanna create a variable that will access that ID. So we said this variable equals document query selector that's gonna look through our document and find this specific ID. ID is called button wrapper here. So this is gonna grab button wrapper. And when this function is called, right, on the button itself, on click remove me, when we access this function, it's going to look for that variable button wrapper, and then it's going to say, remove this button wrapper. Remove it. And it looks through the CSS as well, right? No, it does not look through the CSS as well. And this, it's only looking through the HTML. Okay, I forgot to figure out like um when you click the button, it removes all the content, including like the coloring, the background color for the container. I'm yes. still trying to wrap my head around that. Yes. It, okay. All right. I get it. So when you when we are removing 
button wrapper, which is accessing this div here called button wrapper. We are removing it. So when we remove it, we remove it and any rules associated with it. So we're not actually accessing the, the CSS. We're deleting this div that has access to the CSS. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So we're not touching the CSS. This div has access to the CSS. We're able to get it through the same ID. But what we're doing is we're deleting this HTML element. And now the CSS, even though the rule is still there, it's not connecting to this div because we've deleted this div. Okay, that makes sense now. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and close out this lecture period unless we have any other questions. Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Okay, let's go. Let's continue. All right, so we have the breakout rooms created. Thank you, Vincent. And uh, let's go ahead and um, end this lecture. I'll have the recording up um, as soon as I can right after this lecture. So stop share. Oh, let's uh, actually, we need to share. We need to do one thing that we always do, which is go over the calendar. So let me go over that. All right, so end of the day assignment uh, goal is button clicker and video preview. After this afternoon lecture, which is a lab, a little bit of a presentation as well. We're going to do code review starting at 3.30, not 3 exactly, 3.30. And then we continue on the next group at 4. If uh, the 3.30 group goes a little bit into the 4 o'clock group, um, we'll, uh, I think I may ask Vincent to help me with code reviews today. So we'll get that figured out. Tomorrow, it's all day we're doing belt review. Okay, We're doing review for the exam on Wednesday. So after today, we would have learned everything that we need to learn in order to pass our exam. So tomorrow is just going to be a belt review day. And then on Wednesday is our belt exam for our yellow belt. Okay, once you complete the yellow belt, you uh, would have passed all the requirements to finish web fundamentals. And then the rest of the... Uh, Lectures are going to be supplemental information. It's going to still be super helpful for you as a developer. So you're going to want to make your goal to pass on Wednesday so that you can make Thursday and Friday uh, lectures. And then next week, we're doing our, uh, after next week, we're, we're working on our projects, our personal projects, using all that we've learned, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So lots of ground to cover still. Um, this this day is a uh, a lot of information to cover, so um, you want to stay engaged today all the way until you uh, finish your tests. All right. So JavaScript is what we're covering. DOM manipulation for the rest of today, a little bit tomorrow in the exam review, and then uh, we're good for the exam. All Wednesday, the whole day will be focused on the exam. Okay. So let's continue our day. I'll stop sharing my screen. Stop the recording.